Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hi guys, and welcome to OneMinuteTennis.com. In today's session, I'd like to take a close and detailed look at the role of the wrist and how to stay loose in the strokes. Because being loose when hitting the modern forehand is absolutely essential, but it's not so easy to achieve unless it's totally natural to you. And for most people watching, this will be totally unnatural. So when I play the forehand stroke, if I have a tight wrist, then the flow, the lag, the movement of the stroke all disappear. And then when I loosen everything up, then the racket suddenly becomes alive and it's so easy with modern equipment to create massive spin and massive speed. When this isn't natural, the route that most players take, probably you, is to examine every component part of that loose and natural swing and try to deliberately and consciously place the racket into the right positions to reproduce the strokes of the best players in the world. Now, there's a fundamental problem with this. It doesn't work. There has to be a part of the stroke where it's just totally relaxed and it just happens. But if it doesn't just happen, what do you do about it? A great solution is to get the correct feeling of the hand and the wrist. So what I want to do today is isolate the feeling of the wrist and the hand, show you how to find that feeling, and then when you add the feeling to your forehand, you won't have to consciously put all of these parts together. They will just magically happen, and you'll get more speed and power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the racket, and I'm going to have a nice loose grip, but that doesn't actually do it. That's not the secret. And I'm going to move the racket up and down like this. And if you look closely, my wrist is moving the racket. And now what I'm going to try and do is reproduce the same up and down rocking motion of the racket, but without the wrist moving. So with the wrist and without the wrist, with the wrist and without the wrist. Let's have a closer look. So with the wrist moving, and now with the wrist neutral, and the racket reproduces the same shape. To do this, I have to free up the hand. Let's have a look from this direction. With the wrist, and without the wrist. Without the racket, it may be clearer. See how with the wrist, the fingers and the relationship of the fingers and thumb remain constant. Now I'm going to free up three of the four fingers and just use the thumb and the forefinger to find the bounce. And now, without the wrist and with the wrist. And now when we go back to the forehand stroke, I'm going to try and make the stroke without the conscious movement of the, the wrist. wrist. And quite rightly, anybody watching this closely could say, but well, you're still using your wrist. And it's 100% right. But the feeling is totally different. You see, when I do it where I know I'm consciously using the wrist, I have control of the whole movement. It's not free, and it's not smooth, and it's not fast. But when I make the shape, imagining that I'm not going to use the wrist, trying to just free up the arm, free up the hand, so that I don't use the wrist. But now it's the momentum of the racket that makes the swing and creates the racket speed. You see, consciously with the wrist. And now I'm going to place my hand in a position where the racket can move without the wrist. And now the extra movement and momentum of the racket and leverage of the racket will actually create a larger and free wrist movement. So it's very counterintuitive. By deliberately not using the wrist, I actually create more wrist movement than before. I create more racket speed. I create more angular momentum. I create more power and I create more spin. So find the feeling of not using the, the wrist, wrist and then add it to your stroke and you will find that it actually creates a much larger wrist, wrist movement, a much faster racket head and a lot more power in the stroke. I hope this makes sense. It's not the simplest of subjects. For the players who find it natural, it's super easy. For the players who don't find it natural, 
it seems to be a mystery that often they never solve because they're trying to solve it by consciously reproducing the movements instead of subconsciously letting the movements happen and counterintuitively actually stopping or trying to stop what has to occur. If you like my ideas on tennis, check out our books on Amazon. We have books covering every aspect of the game and all the parts of the game are broken down into the science and biomechanics of the stroke and then super simple illustrated solutions such as this that will really help you to get to the next level. Or join players in over 40 countries all over the world that I'm helping with a unique blend of one-to-one -one coaching and video analysis. For more information, email us or check out the website. So to create the correct wrist action in your forehand, the key is exactly the opposite of what you'd imagine. Don't try to make the same wrist action as the pros. Try to get the feeling of the hand moving the racket and the wrist not moving at all and then make the stroke and the hand will move the wrist, will move the racket and create racket speed and spin that you couldn't believe you could achieve. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work. Yeah,